Welcome to Gritability, a podcast about the power of perseverance, overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds to attain the life of your dreams. I'm your podcast host, Adam Clausen. With me is my beautiful, extraordinary co-host, Ro Clausen. Good morning. I'm so happy to be back in the studio. I feel like we've been gone forever. We just got back from two and a half weeks away in New Jersey visiting family. But this is like the highlight of my week. Yes, definitely excited to be here. And we started a conversation last night because today we want to talk a little bit about something that's been in the news, uh, gained a lot of attention. It was that slap scene around the world. Um, that's what happens, man. When you are in the public spotlight, what you do, man, hits the mainstream quick. What we're talking about is Dana White. Thoughts. Oof, so many thoughts. First of all, I feel bad for them. I feel so bad for their family. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, yes, it was awful, and we'll get into that. But in the society we live in right now with cancel culture, you can't do anything wrong. Like everybody is so perfect and they live in these glass houses, but my God, you can't sneeze the wrong way with somebody trying to cancel you. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. The reality is, and I heard something uh, great yesterday about people's perception is generally a reflection of what they see in themselves. Right. Like that's the first thing that we're going to notice. You can't recognize it in someone else if it's not somewhere in you. Mm -hmm. Right. An emotion and an and action, something along those lines. So those people that are generally the most vociferous, like they're out there, you know, calling for somebody's head. A lot of times, you know, they're the ones who it, it comes out later, like they're the ones that have some skeletons. You know, you find that they have a track record of doing that exact thing that they are so adamantly, fervently like out there, you know, calling for somebody to be canceled. Yeah. And we saw the TMZ interview before mm -hmm. we saw the actual clip of what happened. I can show you guys a clip uh, if you guys look up here real quick. I got it pulled up. All right. Yep. Okay, so there it is. He's holding her hands, right? It, and it was funny because we were talking. She smacks him first. And, yeah, she got Oof. loose. He smacks her right back. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but then, okay, watch. He gets, he gets really aggressive. Yeah, and Oof. this is now. Ha. Uh, See, it's tough, right? Well, now, can I give the background on like what we were talking that's about what I was last just night? I'm going to ask you to do, yeah. So, when I saw this, right, I made up a whole story in my head. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know Dana White personally, right? I, I just I don't know the guy, but there are other people um, who do happen to know him who have vouched for his character. So I got to admit that weighs in a little bit. Also, what feeds into my narrative, the story that I created in my mind, was the fact I've been a huge Dana White fan, fan of the UFC since, you know, he came in, helped bring it to the mainstream. I know the work that went into it. I look at him as, as a true visionary. I admire the vision that he had for the sport, the work that he did to build what is now a in empire, right? Um, so those are the things, I, I, admittedly, that go into my thinking. That's where I'm coming from. Uh, looking at him, I want to give him the full benefit of the doubt. When I see that that video, I know that they're on vacation, they're away somewhere. You know, uh, reports are that they have been drinking heavily. I remember when I used to drink. I haven't drank in many years. I made a lot of bad decisions. It ultimately landed me in prison for 213 years, right? So I acknowledge that. It's one of the reasons why I don't drink, because I didn't act rationally, did a lot of insane things. So in my mind, the, the picture here is that the two of them were, were drinking. Whatever happened, maybe one got jealous. Maybe she got a little jealous. 
you know, Dana was maybe, you know, doing something that got her attention that she didn't like. And he went over, because this probably started before the video was rolling, right? There was probably already a heated exchange. They had already gotten to a point, maybe separated. She's over at the bar. She's got her head down. I see Dana come over. And the first thing he does is grab her hands. Like, basically, I know she's going to try and hit me again. <laughs> like, let me prevent her from hitting me. And I've been in that situation where I've had some aggressive women try and physically harm me. And although I was I, never one of them, <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, that's never happened between us. My past relationships, which were not healthy when I was drinking heavily, doing a lot of drugs, partying, all those things like there, there were some instances where women came at me aggressively. And I was explaining this last night. I had one who was trying to punch me, kick me. And, and gratefully, I wasn't that inebriated. I was able to get out the way and get away from her. Um, but I can imagine those situations. So Dana walks up to her, grabs her hands. I see him holding on to her. And she broke loose. And she got out on him. She smacked him. And then he responded. That's the, the tragic part here, right? Because there is a double standard. You know, believe me, people, if it was just her smacking him, if it was just her beating the shit out of him, like getting out on him, one, two, three, four, people wouldn't have been coming for her head. It's not the same, right? They would have expected Dana to simply take that, roll with it, and not respond. That's what I would have done in that situation, regardless of how many times or how many smacks or how many hits. I can say that because I don't drink. I keep my faculties fully about me these days. Um, and fortunately, in, in the past, I never responded that way. Uh, what I did hear was, because we watched the apology first, was Dana profusely first he took responsibility 100 percent do you want me to I, we, I can play the apology and then yeah you guys can like tell me when to stop uh I got the one from TMZ is that the one you guys watched yep. yeah okay yep. perfect so here we go well I'm in, I'm in Cabo Mexico uh you know for the holidays with my family and my wife and I were out Saturday night on New Year's Eve and you know, unfortunately, that's what happened. I'm, I'm one of the guys, you know, you've heard me say for years, there's never, ever an excuse for a guy to put his hands on a woman. And now here I am on, on TMZ talking about it. But my wife and I have been married for almost 30 years. We've known each other since we were 12 years old. We've obviously been through some together and uh, we've got three kids. And, you know, this is one of those situations that's, you know, Horrible. Uh, I'm embarrassed, but it's also one of those situations that is, uh, you know, right now we're more concerned about our kids. You know, we, we have three kids and, uh, you know, obviously <clears throat> since the video popped up, we've shown the kids the video and, you know, we're, we're more focused on our family right now. People are going to have opinions uh, on this and, and, and most of the people's opinions would be right. And especially in, in my case, uh, you, you don't, you don't put your hands on a woman ever. Um, my wife and I obviously love each other. We've been together for a very long time. We've known each other since we were very little. And this is just one of those unfortunate situations. You were at a place in Cabo that um, where alcohol flows. Yeah, I mean, Dana, what we were told by people who were in the club that it at least to them seemed that there was a lot of alcohol uh, in, involved in this situation. There was definitely a lot of alcohol involved, but that's that's no excuse. I literally am making no excuses for this thing at all. It's never happened before. It's the first time that it's ever happened. And people are going to say what they're going to say. It's, it's, it just is what it is. And, and, and whatever people do say, uh, it's deserved. I deserve it. It, it, it happened. I, I don't know why it happened. And, uh, you know, my wife and I have apologized to each other. We've apologized to our kids and you know, this is one of those things that everybody's going to chime in. I could care less what anybody else thinks about. He doesn't care what you guys think. 
right now. We'll- <laughs> Clearly. Um, and yeah, just, just to come back and wrap up my thoughts on this, because I really want to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, knowing that he apologized, took full responsibility for it. It's easy for, you know, someone in his position could have just simply gone, you know, undercover, said, listen, I'm not talking to the media. I'm not talking to the press. It's a private matter, period. I appreciate the fact that he came out. He addressed this thing head on. And being someone who fully appreciates second, third, fourth chances, like I'm definitely someone who's behind giving him the full benefit of when he said, hey, this has never happened before. It'll never happen again. You know, I'm the person. I'm going to be right behind him, supporting him in that. And obviously his actions, because he's going to be under that microscope. Believe me, we'll know if anything ever happens again, because people are going to be looking for it. When you're on top, there's always somebody looking to take you out. And living in that public spotlight has got to be challenging. Um, but there's also a level of accountability. So I know that when I set goals, I love making them public, going out there, letting everybody know, because it helps keep me very focused on staying on track. So maybe this will ultimately help to you know, build uh, their relationship, bring this family a little bit tighter. At least that's my hope. That's what I would love to see come out of this. I want to see them you know, thrive. That's just... That's my nature. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I have so much to say. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. So we'll start with the apology. I can so appreciate that he took full accountability because there were a few times that he could have had an escape. And even TMZ kind of gave him one, like, oh, there was a lot of drinking. He said, yeah, but that's no excuse. Amazing. And again, we're ripping them apart and nobody knows the background. She could have been beating him up for years. He could have been beating her up for years. We don't know. We know nothing about their life behind closed doors. But, and I can argue both sides, right? So it could be. I mean, we know recently that he's been on keto. And I know from my own experience with dieting and mixing, especially very low carb with alcohol and certain types of alcohol in excessive amounts, I turned into a person that I had never seen before. And it was scary. Like I recall after drinking Southern Comfort one night, all night long, gross, standing on a corner in Hoboken, like screaming at people, which is so not my nature, right? Like I know the face. It, why are you making, <laughs> wait, why are you making that face? <laughs> It's just not, or after tequila, right? So it, maybe this is the first time this has ever happened and there, it's mortifying for them. And, or I, we don't know, this could be an, an ongoing thing, but as far as the alcohol and low carbs, I can see it escalating to something where in hindsight, you're like, what the hell did I just do? What just happened? And from the perspective of the woman hitting him, I mean, I've seen girls who have uses, used it as an excuse, like, well, he can't hit me back. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. That is so not right. You know, I, and in my own life, and maybe this is a wrong analogy, but we have an 18 month old son who I choose, we, we don't hit him. I grew up with parents that did, you know, they did that whole spare the rod, spoil the child thing. And so my first reaction initially always wants to be like when he's really at that point I'm like oh and I I, not that I go to hit him but it's like oh I I could hit him it's my first initial reaction but I won't I have to restrain myself in the heat of the moment no matter how pissed I've ever been at you I've never not that I'm ever pissed at you like that but like I've never I've never gone to that because I j- you have to restrain yourself. You're a grown adult, right? And I use the baby as the example because I'm double, triple his size. From the pictures that we see in the video, Dana is a lot larger and seemingly a lot stronger than his wife. So the fact that she didn't have the restraint and she hit him, in my opinion, Dana or whomever that male is in that type of situation should have that restraint. Like you said, you've been beat by a woman. I don't know if you told the knife story <laughs> now or yesterday. I don't remember. You might want to share it, but, but yeah, like you have to 
be able to have that restraint in these situations. Absolutely. And I think that speaks to the fact of there's a level of maturity. As we get older, we make better decisions. But clearly, a little bit younger, uh, alcohol clearly and other substances are going to affect your decision making, especially in a heightened emotional state. That's why dumb stuff happens when you've been drinking, when you're drunk, right? You've been out on the beach all day. Like, you just don't make good decisions. So um, this situation, clearly unfortunate. As I shared, I've had a number of situations in my past. Uh, the other one that you're referring to was being chased um, down the street by a crazy temporarily insane ex, same thing. There were drugs, there were alcohol, there were things involved. She was chasing me with a knife, right? Like that's the definition of insanity. And I do recall finally getting in the car and escaping that situation. I'm like, wow, I gotta start making better choices than the women that I'm choosing to date. Um, but that came around with the entire lifestyle that I was living. So when I started living a different way, it's amazing. You know, I have more healthy relationships where I don't have to worry about those things, right? Um, I am very, very happy with our comfortable, peaceful life and the fact that we don't argue and, you know, frequently... I hear people say, well, it's healthy to have arguments. And I wanna qualify this. I don't think it's healthy to argue. You don't have to agree on everything. And if there's a situation that you don't agree with your partner, with your spouse, man, then you communicate, you work through it, right? And you might, there are going to be emotion involved in there, especially if it's a heavier decision or topic that you're dealing with, but it's how you respond to that. When it gets to the point like where you're yelling and screaming at each other, that's not respecting the other person, right? So despite whatever the emotion is, as you said, being able to keep that in check, that's something that you build up over time, right? You do that because it's something you do habitually. You constantly regulate your own emotions you keep yourself in check. You don't let things bubble up to that level. And this was another conversation that you and I had had yesterday because I found myself getting to the point of frustration where I was um, responding, maybe not how I generally respond in, in certain situations. And as a result, I apologize to you. I said, I've been a little bit short lately. I apologize for my frustration. Here's what I need to do to check myself. Let me get my self-talk back in place because watch your thoughts for they become your words. Watch your words for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your character. And I know these things. And it's because you and I have the knowledge, have the relationship, the communication that I'm able to check that before it gets to a point where I'm so frustrated, I'm so emotionally tense that the smallest thing comes up. Now I explode, you and I are screaming at each other. Could you imagine, like, wow, what a terrible way to live. I lived that way once. I don't ever wanna live like that again. Yeah, and we can go back to your made up scenario of what happened between Dana and his wife, and it could have been just that, right? They could have been on the beach. Like you said, maybe she, she thought he was looking at a woman the wrong way, kept it inside all day, because that's what, as women, what we do, we get insecure, we don't want to say something, right? And then a couple drinks later, or maybe, you know, a bottle of tequila later, then it bubbles up, and then maybe in the bar, oh, he's looking at this person, and you explode. And we're all human. This happens. I mean, what was it, like a month ago, where I just let a whole bunch of different things suppress and suppress and suppress and and what happens right all of a sudden it's gonna come tumbling over and not that we argue like screaming at one another but we had a heated discussion at one point and 
I think I had to take steps back and go to where we were when you were in prison. And we didn't have the ability to do that. And we had to just take steps back and communicate. And I remember I used to get upset about something, right? And I would like do this long email, get it all out as if I was like verbally doing it to you. And then I would not send it. I would wait a couple minutes. I would think through those thoughts, I would rewrite it in a way that I'm like, this is more mature. And so yes, in real life, real life outside here, we don't have that ability to do that. But we do have the ability to like you said, we do this all the time, like you did yesterday. Listen, I'm sorry, I'm short. I did it this morning. It was my energy that was throwing us off a little bit. Here's why. And then we just help each other through it. And that's ideally what your partner is supposed to be there. Sure. Be able to do for you. Yeah. Uh, I think we do a great job keeping each other balanced. Um, so thank you for that. I'm grateful. Yeah, and thank you. To have that. Um, along those lines, as far as, man, being in the public eye, a lot of pressure, a lot of scrutiny. Not every couple or family responds the way that they did. One of the other things that stood out to me in Dana's response was his reference to his children. And to me, that rung very sincere. And I guess, you know, everything as new parents, having an 18 month old, I, I gotta admit, you know, you always hear people say, well, when you have children, it changes everything. You know, we did this a little bit later in life, so we had much more time to experience what it was like not to have children, to make decisions from a different place. Um, and but to always aspire to you know when we have a family this is how we'd like to be i love i appreciate the fact that he brought it back to his family he's like listen you know we went we spoke to our kids about it that's our primary focus right now and i don't care what anybody else thinks i i mean i loved that yeah i read complete genuine from his apology and i think being through what we've been through in the past i think we both read people really well and i didn't get an ounce of insincerity i could be wrong but I thought it was genuine. True, and, and again, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And I try and make um, all of the decisions that I make, um, that I contribute to us making together from that place of thinking about our son first, how's this gonna affect him? All of our goals, all of our visions, like everything is built around our family at this point. So maybe that's why I have that great appreciation for him talking from that position because being at the stage where they are in their lives, in their relationship together as a family, they've had tremendous success, right? Like cancel culture, all of this, you could pull the plug right now. They could disappear, never be heard from again and live very, very comfortably in complete obscurity. And that's, I think that's what people forget. Like they could do whatever they want to do. They could go and run off in the distance, like you said, and live happily ever after, and we'll never hear from them again. Or like they're doing, as far as we're aware of, she's choosing to stay with him despite this going into the public eye, right? So for me to say like, I boycott anything UFC related if he stays, like you're, you're ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, it, and that could be you. your battle that you choose to fight, right? We have to pick our battles and maybe that's your huge stance. And because of whatever trauma you have in your life, fine. For me personally, I don't think it's th that needs to be the case, but that's me. Mm. And I would look at it from this perspective. Um, as far as the business, like you said, canceling the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where people come up with this stuff, right? Um, that's just not a realistic response. Like... To, to try and break a brand down because, you know, the individual who built that brand. Think of how many other people, families, entire families, generations of certain families have been impacted by the UFC and the opportunities that Dana has created for fighters. And uh, there's a different place in my heart for fighters because I've never met someone or seen anyone in the fight game that hasn't had to overcome some incredible adversity, challenges to get to where they are. First and foremost, you don't get in, in that sort of sport 
Like you have to learn how to challenge yourself, how to push yourself to extremes to compete at that level. And then so many fighters particularly come from backgrounds where they've had even more challenges, right? There's just incredible stories, love the personal stories of fighters. And to know that these individuals have been given a vehicle to take that passion for what they love to do, to seize that opportunity, to put that work in, to get to a place where they can provide, not just for themselves, but many of these fighters have done very, very well, better than they could have done probably in any other you know, avenue, opportunity that was available to them in life, right? And they've created generational wealth where their families are going to benefit generationally. Like, that can't be understated. Dane is responsible. It was his vision, right? And he didn't just have the vision. He did the work, brought it to the mainstream, created these opportunities, continues to create opportunities for fighters. Everything that he has designed and, and built into this organization has lifted so many people up. I greatly admire and respect that. And man, I can't believe people would want to see the organization suffer as a result of any you know indiscretions he might have had, not might have had, had what he did here. That should not affect the organization. No, absolutely not. And I think it it just needs to be separate, right? And I don't know, maybe should he be held? And this is a genuine question too, to a different standard because he's around fighters all the time and kind of representing that, that maybe people are holding him to a different standard because he has to set the bar for the fighters. I don't know, but I'm with you. Like I agree with, I believe in second chances. What he did was wrong and he's owning that what he did was wrong and the UFC shouldn't suffer. But what do you think? What do I think as far as what? Should he be held to a different standard? Because he's kind of... Should he be? I mean, I mean, we should hold everyone to the same high standard. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, anybody that's in the public spotlight, like they're going to be under a different level of scrutiny. And the level of success that he has had brings additional scrutiny. Like, you got people that are just going to hate, especially through social media. You know, they're just looking for that opportunity to take a swing at somebody because again, it's a reflection of their own insecurities. Like, why should this guy have this amazing life doing what he loves to do, and I'm not happy in my life? So when they see the opportunity to try and chop someone down, they jump at it. They come, you know, screaming for that person's head. And again, it's a reflection of some insecurity that they have, or of, you know, fear of being discovered for them having a similar past, having done something very similar. I can't tell you, and, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take it back to prison, right? Because I spent way too much time in there. But the lessons that I learned in prison, living in a fishbowl, right? Where I got to study human behavior very closely. And I studied, you know, psychology, nonverbal expressions, all of these things so that I could better understand the people around me. And what I saw very, very often was that person who would come out and would try and point towards someone else. Like, hey, this guy's no good. This guy's a rat. This guy's done this. He's done that. If, if he kept it, kept going, kept going, I'm like, time out. Let's have a conversation. Like, where are you com where's all this coming from? Granted, like what he's saying might be true, but the manner in which he's bringing this forth with such vehemence generally, generally meant there was something there that we needed to check into. And man, nine times out of 10, high percentage, 90% of the time, that person was trying to hide something. And eventually it came out. He'd be like, oh my God, that guy who was running around talking about this guy was no good, this guy was no good, was actually no good. I mean, you know, you, you were privy to, to many of these situations and unfortunately when they would unfold, um, consequences would be pretty harsh on that person, right? Because of 
the attention, all, you know, everything that they had done to escalate situations, you know, um, very similarly. So, you know, I don't, I don't know who's, you know, who those people are that are, that are screaming, that are at the forefront asking for, you know, Dana's head. Um, <laughs> but you might want to take a look at those people. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And that's not even a prison thing. I think that's a human nature thing. Women coming for other women, typically, like hard like that, typically there's, there's something in their, in their closet. Mm, no doubt. So, what do you think? Was there anything else that you wanted to uh, touch on as far as with uh, Dana and his wife's situation? No, I'm just, I think... I think we're both on the same page with this. Uh, it was absolutely wrong and there's no defending it, but he's owning it. And who are we to judge if we're sitting here because we were given a second chance? Like you said the other night, a third chance. So who are we to say that they don't deserve a second chance? All right. Well, I didn't know if we were going to land exactly on the same side of this. A lot of times we do. Um, I'm grateful to hear that we are on the same page. We believe in second chances, third chances, fourth chances. I mean, it's the reason why we're here today. I was definitely given more chances um, than a lot of other people. So I want to give Dana and his family, uh, just let them know, hey, we're behind you. We support you. Uh, want to see good things. And anybody else you know, who's been through a similar situation, you know, uh, all the best to you. Um, we're recipients of second chances and we appreciate everyone who supported us. So uh, we will definitely be back here again very soon with more incredible stories, overcoming incredible adversity, being out in the public spotlight, Adam Clausen, your pod host, my beautiful co-host, Ro Clausen, saying goodbye. Have a great day, guys. Have a great day.